Hello and welcome. Um, so Max did a presentation on writing CTF challenges in general a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, I don't know, um, on just making CTF challenges, and that's a great primer for this video. Um, this one's gonna be focusing on reversing challenges, and specifically, I'm going to be walking through two of the ones that I wrote for the WESIS CTF 2022. So a little, about, a little bit about who am I, um, security major, um, third, fourth year, I don't really know. Um, music and technology minor, play trombone, um, like reverse engineering and malware, malware is oh, so much fun. Um, I'm also a Dvorak keyboard user. <laughs> um, so a little bit about what we're going to cover. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of what is reverse engineering, um, and then the general process of coming up with CTF challenge ideas, um, actually writing them and getting them out into actual um, competitions, and then going over two of the um, challenges that I wrote. So one is reverse engineering. Um, overall, it's just figuring out how something works, um, learning to read lots of assembly. Um, typically, you don't have source code unless you wrote the thing. Then you can kind of do a side-by-side -side thing. Um, so what's the process? First, you come up with ideas. What do you want people to learn? What do you want to learn? Maybe you want to learn how to write something in a new language or um, want to learn a new technique. Uh, so this is a great way to um, explore that. So the next part is planning. Um, so here's a couple things that you want to think about. Um, programming language, do you want to learn a new language? Do you want to use a certain functionality within a language? Um, themed. Uh, challenges are so much fun, so you gotta think of a theme. Um, where do you want to hide the flag? It's another thing that you wanna think about, and then obfuscation, we'll get to that a little bit later, but that's also something to think about. Um, third part is execution, so write some code. There's not really um, a way around that, unless it's not a coding um, challenge. But um, Then you get into testing, you absolutely wanna test do the testing. If you can't do your own challenge, then you really can't expect other people to do your challenge. Um, so setting up an environment that you would expect competitors to have. Um, so maybe it's a clean VM, um, that type of thing. And consult others, maybe ask a friend to do your challenge, see if they can do it. So the first example is an easy challenge. I called it playing with error messages. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, First thing is coming up with ideas. All I really knew is, well, it's an easy reversing challenge. I don't really know what else. Maybe let's place it with error messages. Those are really fun. So I chose C as my language. People may have opinions about C. But um, I originally wanted to do Python, but Python ended up not working for what I wanted to do. So I was like, well, let's, let's just go with C. Um, Know the theme, we want to exploit verbose error messages. Um, we don't want to hide the flag, I was thinking. Eventually, I'll put it to the terminal somehow. I don't really know how to get there, but that's kind of what I wanted to do. And then obfuscation, I wasn't even thinking about that at all, but it, that came up later, which we'll get to. So step by step, let's get a main function going. Let's make sure that I can write a main function in C. That's probably where you should start. So I made it just print out hello, terminal, yay, it works. I know how to write a main function in C. So how do we want to use error messages? So here I just checked the number of arguments that were passed, and if it wasn't two, tell the user, tell them, hey, you should have two arguments. And making sure that that works. Testing as you write, it's very good. You should do that. Um, so let's make it something super specific. Let's just say high exclamation point is going to be our second argument. So let's say, check to see if the number of arguments is two. If it isn't, let the user know and then quit. Otherwise, compare that second argument to the string. And then if the two are equal, um, print out the string. Otherwise, say that it's the wrong second argument. And again, we do some testing. Make sure that it works. This first one, you just say high, no exclamation point. And as expected, it says it's not the right argument. And then with the exclamation point, it just prints out that string. 
So let's make it even more verbose. So we have a basic concept. Now let's make it a little bit more clear what we want. So we still have the same thing checked to make sure both the um, we have two arguments. Um, then here I added a line that gets the length of that second argument. And then if it isn't three, which is the length of hi exclamation point, then let the user know that the number of characters should be three. And then we have the same stuff over here. But let's make it even more verbose than that. And let's change the flag while, or the second argument while we're at it. So the second argument should be flag, a little bit, um, maybe a little too obvious, but. Um, so we add another flag here at the bottom. Um, we're checking each character in that second argument to see if it's the correct character. And if not, let the user know what it should be instead. So it's very, very verbose, very clear. Um, and then if the user gets it right, then you print out the flag. Now there's one small problem with this. If someone runs the strings program on this, it'll show up straight in strings, which is not really what we wanted. Um, wanted the user to use the terminal. I'll figure it out that way. And you can see all, all of the strings that were in the little program. Um, so how do we fix that? This is um, where obfuscation comes into play. So here I decided to use XOR encoding. Um, which isn't terribly complicated. You just need to figure out, okay, what's the key that you want? Um, so here, this unsigned care string, that went on for eternity. That was the um, entire flag. Um, but I had used the key on it, XOR, and then had that in there. So it wouldn't show up whenever you run strings. And then this little loop here, It'll just take each character, XOR it with the key, and then it'll print out the right character, and then that way the whole flag doesn't show up in strings. And then after you're done writing, and after you're done testing, um, give some light hints in the description. That's the description that I used um, to guide people to use the terminal instead of just running the executable, which wouldn't do anything. Um, so the next one um, was a medium challenge. I called it grandma's passwords. Um, so with this one for planning, uh, I knew it was a medium challenge, so it had to be a little bit harder than the last one. Um, maybe something with ransomware, I don't know. Um, let's have some sort of encrypted file with a flag in it, and then let's write it in C again. I like C. So let's make a little main function. Um, so the goal, goal of this was to just read from a text file. Um, so it's going to read all the characters in that text file and then append it to another string, which would then get passed to a separate function, which would actually do uh, the encryption. So how do we want to do this? Um, maybe something a little bit different from the other challenge. Still want something small. Um, also reversible, so it was easier on my end. Um, so back to XOR encoding. This time, instead of with one key, it was a string of characters. So I forget what I was intending with that to begin with. But it was some sort of um, string, which the, I then converted to hex. Um, so then each character in the file, or now the new appended string, would get XOR with the key. So it iterate through that string and then cycle back to the beginning until the entire contents was encrypted. Um, you can see this is the loop to see where in the string to begin the actual XOR and then put that onto a new string. So to generate this encrypted file, this kind of looks like a little bit of garbage. So we just ran through, um, put in an input file of actual text and then spits out this. And that's what we provide um, to the competitors. This is what they get. Go fix it. Go, make, uh, go find the flag. And then whenever you test it, all you really had to do was change this passwords um, encrypted to passwords decrypted.txt. And then the program would say, OK. And then it would um, use that XOR. Um, spit out the actual flag. Um, and then the same thing here, create a description, do your little write-up, make sure it works. 
I know I had a lot of issues with this. You see these little, little characters here. That was not in the original file. I don't know how those are there. <laughs> there for the culture, of course. Um, it's also also an issue with the. Um, if we go back to our key, um, sometimes whenever you would go ahead and decrypt it, it would get like this far, and then the rest of it would just be garbage. It's like, okay, that's cool. So then you had to change the key to make it actually work. And it worked up until here, which was good enough because it had the, the little flag in there. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yes, Anthony. So the question was, um, reversing kind of overlaps with crypto, um, and is there any way around that? Um, there is a lot of overlap, but I think you can make something that doesn't directly involve crypto. Um, you have to think a little outside the box. Um, these, on well, this last one sort of-ish did. Um, but you don't have to, you could do something completely different. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Does anyone else have any questions? All right, thank you.